how do you crack a combination when you don't know what the combination is? What sorcery is behind making this work where you can choose a number? Spin around, pick another number. And come back around and step in another number and then it opens. I'm gonna find out. So next, I think I'm gonna come in from the back, open this old lock up, see what happens inside to figure out what the combination is and how to use those inner workings and that information to help me pick, or not pick, but crack other combination locks. Mm. All right, let's do it. In order to get this cut open, I need to find stuff in this great big mess of a garage and projects that I've been living on or li planning to get to and here we are we got angle grinder mess from other projects make some space toys the kids bucket to sit on and I just set that lock down right here next to my Mountain Dew. All right, so got the lock, bag. Overkill is underrated. And that is a metal disc. Excellent. And yeah. cool. So, spanner. Cutting disc for an angle grinder, an angle grinder right here. So I'm going to get this into place there. I have to take this off. And that button right there holds this in place while I do that. And cutting disc place. A little bit of a lip for that to sit in. There we go. Yeah, that's still right. I'll get that started. Oop. And my apologies for the camera movement. Holding the camera while working is not ideal. Uh, stand by while I work this out. Here we are. So, here we go. Getting hot. I guess I didn't say it. It's getting hot too. All right. I'm going to hold it by the shackle because there's zero chance that's going to backfire.
we've got a good start here. I wasn't planning to use this, but it's handy. Let's see if it will help us. There we go. Excellent. So taking the back off, we can see just about nothing. Congratulations. Great success. All right, but I still got jagged edges I can get myself cut up on. That's fun. And good news is we didn't destroy the system here. But we do see the bottom of the shackle when I yank on it affects over here. And we got this whole plate that's stopping us from seeing anything. Um, thinking I'm going to push my luck and see if uh, taking this plate off is going to ruin everything or if that's going to give us the opportunity to see better. All right, T. Let's see here. I got flathead. Oh, here. Phillips. Only one screw. That one right there. That's just a piece that's hopefully not relying on this plate to stay in place. Oh, that's. Oh. That's covered screwdriver. Fun. Try taking. Oh, well, really? I'm sorry, I think that's not a screw at all. That looks like that might be pounded in to shape to lock that in place. All right, well, in that case, I guess we will take a little bit more of the body out, maybe. All on the sides to get a better peek. Um, no time like the present. Interesting. Good news and bad news. This is all one riveted piece still inside there. I cut through some of it. Luckily, it doesn't look like I cut the shackle, which is what I was a little worried about. All right, well, I'm going to cut a little bit deeper. So we did disturb this little spring piece poking out. Unfortunate, but uh, it is what it is. Oh wait, maybe that's not a piece of spring. Yeah, it's a piece of spring. So we got all these pieces here. Oh, all these pieces here and there. You can see that all moving. Lock still doesn't get a chance to go anywhere. And, uh, yep. Yeah. I'll get us some light here. 
get a better setup, get a better look in there, get that little piece of jagged edge out of the way. Ah. Oh. Stand by. All right, and here we are. Better lighting. You can see some of those pieces in there. Now, we got those two. I'll take a quick look when we go back the other way. Go back the other way. The other two don't go nowhere. You should see that piece move and boom. And boom. All right, so while well, looking in there, we'll see here. Looks like about there sits right on that plate. And so the plate looks like the middle one there. You see a little notch up at the top. We come back the other way around a little bit. It's supposed to be a full rotation normally. We'll bounce that back down to close as we can get. It's hard to tell. I might have to cut this open a little bit more. But then we see that notch right there. Come back this way. Bring that notch up around there. We should be pretty close. Almost not quite. We got that spot there, and I'm aiming for that little bar piece right there near the shackle because I'm assuming that's what the catch is. I was noticing a few numbers were catching on me pretty regularly. I'm coming up here. Coming around, yeah, it's like eight thirty-six. There's eight and thirty-six, and every once in a while I'd hit a random different number. About those two. So here's eight, and looks like that might be the middle one catching. Maybe. Come back around. So we catch on 36. Right there, heard it click. That's definitely not the middle one. All right. Oh, it looks like that catches up on the top, not down at the bottom. I was trying to catch down there, not up here. Okay. So let me come back around a few times. The other one right there. Looks like this will catch that bar right there. That puts us at, oh, a few bit more. Let me try this nudging a little bit more. Because that's like 36, 37. There we are. Come back around and catch that middle one. Bring that back up. And this could be a little tricky to see. But uh, all right, completely blew past it. Watch that bin eight. I'm gonna feel dumb if those numbers I was catching on was the right numbers. I just somehow wasn't getting it just right. It means that I cut into this lock just because I underestimated. What I was learning. So we know first one, it's like 37, 38. Yeah, right about there ish. Come back around past that number. I was guessing it's gonna be like eight. Then come back to. Still not there. All right. Mm. All right. So maybe cutting a little bit more over here. Oh, hold up. Is that? Yeah. 
So yeah, it looks like I am right. My first assumption, the pin I'm trying to catch is down here, I think. Oh, that would make sense because that's this pin right here I'm trying to move. All right. With that in mind, we can come back around several times over until we confidently think we got that notch that just went by around there, um, maybe, is that right? Can't quite see in there. I think that's about it. At 26. Come back around. And clearly I went too far. Oh. That looks like I didn't set the first one right. Closer to there. And five. Frustrating. There. Now we will have a better chance of being able to see and learn the secrets. Secrets! <laughs> All right. So looking down in there, we can see that shackle piece move in. We can see where the disc is in relation. And we will occasionally look at the front first. Spin around a whole bunch, get it all set. Come back around. And we're going to set the top one first, then the middle one, then the bottom one. So come back around. I just passed it, but that's okay. Uh, right about there. And come all the way around one full rotation. If we catch that one, bring it back over there. And bring this one back around. Around there. Okay, so currently that is not where the catch goes. What am I trying to line these up with? This comes up. 
Oh, that's embarrassing. It's all right there, I think. Yeah, you see it? Right there, as I pull that comes down. It means all this cutting was kind of a little silly, except it's kind of hard to see all the way down that bottom one. So we're still gonna come in and work down here, like, like, oh, like around there. Uh, that top one, it's gonna be easy to set right around there. And there we are. So first number, about 38. Come all the way around, past 38. And I'll work down there. I see the notch, it's right there. Bring that around. There we go, got that lined up in there. Then I come back around, should be lined up there. There we are, outstanding. All right. So I do know that earlier when messing with this, following the techniques given, keeping constant pressure and turning, I was catching a lot around eight. I was also catching a lot around 36. And every once in a while I'd hit other numbers. And this time we're gonna go ahead and go all the way around and set that first number, which is easy to see. One's pretty easy to set up. So first one's there. Big whoop, 36, 30, or er, somewhere around 37. And that is going that way. I need to go this way. Coming back around. Right around there. Puts us at 35. Interesting. And come back around. Oh, I messed up. All right. So my first number, 37-ish. Big surprise there. And come around until we move that button right there. there so interesting that would be in 14 which I wasn't really catching on 14 much that's all right I'll come back the other way right there last number is 35 Whew. so 35 37 35 and Good grief, what was the other number? It's on the film. I'll check. Interesting. But now we have an idea of how this works. Alright. Now we get better understanding how this works. I sit here on the throne. I messed around with this. Thought about it. One thing I've noticed is when I was getting it, trying to figure it out by feel, I would get caught between this top plate and the bottom plate. At no point in time do I get any feel whatsoever for what the middle number is. So at best, with this particular cheap lock, I would be able to identify uh, two numbers and know that one of them is the first number and the other one is the second number. Although in this particular lock, once I go all the way around here like this, and I stop, if I stop at 36, and you look down there, you'll see I just barely line up those two. And actually, if I move this back just a little bit, 
Alright, I closed that gap up, but I can open that gap back up. Or I could miss it completely. But um, there are times when I was trying to do this by feel, and I'd fall like 36, 37, and I'd be in a tight lock where I can't go one way or the other. Um, let's see if I can get pretty close here. Yeah, so right there, I pull this. That tries to fall in almost right on there. Um, we'll go ahead and leave this here. That's lined up going that way. We come back the other way. And we will see when we look down in here. If I give me a second while I try to figure out how to do this with only my two hands. But if I'm looking in there, I can see that little wheel in there. I should be able to line that up or mess it up entirely. That's cool too. Start all over. And there we go. That's the first number, which was 37. And when you look deep in there, with the right light, you can kind of see that the last number in there is really close to it because it's like 37 and 35, something like that. But we got that there. Go ahead and switch back the other way. And we come around. That knot should be coming up pretty soon here. there. I got it. But there's no way to feel that. I'm going to go back the other way. And there we are. Now, there's a much easier way to do this. I mean, open a lock, not figure out the code. And that is to use a shim. And I'll show you some of that and just as soon as I finish up here. But, yeah, for the record, come back around. We you know 37, like I said, was the first number. I keep forgetting what the second number is. I want to say it's like 14. I'm going to come all the way around past 37. I'll take a look down in there again. is oh 14 number is 14 now from here I'm gonna go back the other way oh I just want the dang it yeah I messed that up Thirty-seven. One round past thirty-seven. We now know that's fourteen. So we can see now it's two, and that was going this way, then that way. So now we go back this way. I could leave a little bit of tension on there, get that arm going a little bit. When I hit the right number, it should fall right in. Bam! Last number, 34. 34, so the three magic numbers, 36, 14, 34. Which leaves me really puzzled why I was consistently finding myself when trying to do it by feel, coming around, I would get stuck. 36, which makes sense. Sometimes I bend to find a little bit of wiggle room around there. But the other one was nowhere near anything else. Right here, coming in this direction. I'm stopping on like 8. Consistently stopping at like 8. 
And when I look inside, I got one notch on the bottom, one notch on the top, the middle number, the middle wheel. Can't see, but it's not touching anything. That hammer or a slide piece in there. It's just touching the top too. It doesn't even come in deep enough to touch the middle number. So it's just been faking me out. Coming this way. I drag past. There I catch. Oh, right there. I'm caught on both the bottom and the top wheel in here. If I can get the light in there. Eventually. You can see the top wheel there. And I'll go ahead and pull back. You see the little one right there. Just barely catches in there. Oh boy. But this is a fun learning experience. I hope it uh, helped you a better understanding how these common, simple, cheap uh, locker combination locks work. But I will show you a quicker, easier, less destructive way to just pop this SOB open. But first, I gotta finish up here. Excuse me, guys and gals. This quick trick to get past the combination lock is brought to you by Mountain Dew. What you need is an empty can. Completely empty, nothing in it. And one way or another, you could take a little piece of it to form a shim. And there's a lot of different ways you can do about that, or try to do that. I'm just going to stab into it with a knife. And then I'm going to find another way to leave my phone out of my hand, but held. All right. Then if you stab it, stab into it, and drop your phone. Drop it anyway. Continue to struggle. Try to keep this balanced like this. Maybe. Maybe with the leg. There we go. All right, so. Don't need a lot. That is more than plenty. And it actually kind of works to my favor because what I want is a spot that's not so straight. I want it to curve out to give me a spot that's going to reach further down. And if it doesn't get me that when I first rip it, then I will not hesitate to rip some more or to cut some more so that I have that point down there at the end of the fold. This might be a little long for the shaft, but uh, if I need to, I can rip or cut more. And I will need to. No big deal. I got a knife. Right, we'll cut and tear. I still have that point at the bottom. And I got my lock. I'm just going to go in through there. Get up nice and slow. Shift and slide down a little bit. And I'm going to jam it all up in there and knock it down. Disappointed. But that's all right. I can try again. And here we are. The wrinkles in this can might be working against me here. Yeah, they really are. It's all right. I will try again. All right, now I found a better spot to keep my phone. We're gonna try this again. I got the can I cut into. I'm just gonna try to grab some of it. Try to get myself a little space to work with. Don't need to be too thick. I'm just gonna make sure I don't wrinkle it all up. And I know I need to get in the lock there on that shaft. I'm going to slide that down. When I do, I'm just going to help coat and allow that to slide up. And just like that. And just so you can see the inside working is here. Lighting is poor. 
but when that lock comes in, it, oh my goodness, what's it hang up? Oh, it won't move. Interesting. All right. Snaps into place. That little spring load there. Because I got it all cut open, I can reach in there with a knife or something and just kind of slide that over. If I can get a tip on it, my knife's kind of fat, and be able to pull that out. Maybe not with that knife, the blade's too wide, but something smaller like this should do the trick just fine. Just for demonstration purposes, if I reach in there, I push that little shoe back, that will open. And it's the same concept, just coming from the outside without cutting it open, sliding into the space here, down, and able to hit. And I can't see it so well. But you get the idea. Something as simple as some aluminum can or something else equally as thin and malleable that you can curve around the shaft to slide down and get in there. Um, some feeler gauges, certain widths might work. Uh, you might be able to improvise with some sort of uh, other aluminum maybe. But, you know, feel free to experiment and share. In the meantime, uh, try not to be late to class.